Hello, my name is Dave Helge, Vice President of Maintenance and Safety for Ideal Lease. Ideal Lease is committed to providing our customers with a vehicle that operates with the highest level of uptime and safety every day. To do this, we need your help. We rely on you as a professional driver to communicate to us on a daily basis the condition of your vehicle. The pre and post trip inspections and the daily driver vehicle inspection report are the tools you use to provide us with the required vehicle status information. As a professional driver of a commercial motor vehicle, it is your responsibility to make sure your vehicle is in safe operating condition. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration requires that all drivers complete a daily pre and post trip inspection. These inspections are vital for your own safety and the safety of the general public. Ideal Safe provides a daily vehicle inspection report, or DVIR, to help you follow a checklist and document any defects to the vehicle. The DVIR form communicates to your company and to our service department any defects you have found so they can be repaired. If the defects are safety sensitive, the repairs must be completed and certified before the vehicle can be placed back into service. By working together, we can keep your vehicle operating at the highest level of safety and uptime for you and your company. Let's review the ideal safe recommended procedure for an inspection of your vehicle. Our inspection starts as we walk towards the vehicle. Observe how the unit is sitting. Is it level? This can be an indication of a broken spring or a flat tire. Examine the exterior. Look for body damage near the top of the unit. This could indicate that the vehicle has collided with an overpass or low hanging trees. Look for fluid leaks under the unit that can only be seen from a distance. Always pay attention to where the unit is parked in the surroundings, other vehicles, water, overhead wires, and the like. Now enter the cab and review the previous day's DVIR to determine if any defects from the day before were noted. And if so, check to see if they have been repaired and certified. Start your pre-trip inspection for today's trip by filling in the date and unit number on the DVIR. Sign and date the previous day's DVIR that it has been reviewed. Next, let's conduct a light test. Our units are equipped with a lamp check button on the dash that activates a pre-trip light test. The lamp test repeatedly flashes all the lights on the vehicle in a sequence. This allows you to walk around the vehicle and verify that all the lights are working properly while you're completing your inspection. Turn the key to ignition or accessory, set the park brake, and press the lamp check button. Now let's begin our inspection. Before we get started, I recommend that you wear gloves for the inspection. First step of the inspection is to open the hood. While I'm doing this, I'm checking the condition of the front of the truck, including the fenders, the hood, the grill, and front bumper. Make sure the license plate is intact and not expired. Check the headlights and signal lights. Also check the cab clearance lights. On a truck equipped with fender mirrors, see if they're secure and unbroken. This is a good time to look under the truck for fluids which would indicate a leak. Under the hood, you will check fluid levels including the oil level, coolant level, and windshield washer fluid level. Check the oil level to make sure it is above the low mark. If you need to add oil, don't overfill above the full mark. Check the washer fluid to make sure it is full. Check the radiator overflow tank. Make sure the radiator coolant level is above the low mark as well. Some vehicles are equipped with a sight glass that can be checked to determine the coolant level. If the unit is low on coolant, write up the condition on your DVIR. Our units are operating with extended life antifreeze which cannot be mixed with traditional coolant. Do not remove the radiator cap if the engine has been operated recently. Loosening the cap under these circumstances could result in severe burns. Inspect the radiator and radiator hoses, both upper and lower, for leaks. 
Test the tension of the windshield wiper blades against the windshield. Check the rubber for damage and stiffness and make sure the blades are not loose. While the hood is open, inspect the overall condition of the engine compartment and pay close attention for any fluid leakage. Also take a look at the inside of the steer axle tires and braking system. Check the air filter housing and the intake tube leading into the turbocharger. They should be firmly attached. The yellow air filter restriction gauge indicator should not be in the red. If it is, write it up on the DVIR. Air restriction gauges are located at the air filter housing. Now close the hood and secure the latches. Here is an important tip. Each and every inspection should be systematic and completed in the same way each time to make sure that nothing is overlooked. We will start at the front left steer axle tire and move around the unit in a clockwise motion until we are back at the driver's side of the cab. Let's start with the left front steer axle tire and wheel. Here we are looking at the wheel and tire to see that there is no damage to the rim or tire. The rim should be free of any cracks or damage. Make sure the lug nuts are tight by testing them with your hands. Look for rust streaks on steel rims and black streaks on aluminum rims, which would indicate a loose lug nut. The only accurate way to test the tire for inflation is to use a tire gauge. If the pressure is less than 100 PSI, write it up on your DVIR. Do not strike the tire with any type of object to test the pressure as this is inaccurate and may cause you injury. Look at the sidewall on the inside and outside of the tire for cuts and abrasions and separations. If there is a cut to the sidewall, make sure that the ply cord cannot be seen as this is an out of service violation. The tread depth on steer axle tires is required to be a minimum of 430 seconds. Turn a penny upside down and insert in a groove of the tire. The tread should be equal to or greater than the point where Lincoln's hair touches his forehead. Use this inspection procedure and measurement for all the tires on your truck. If the tread depth is less than this, write this condition on the DVIR. As we move to the front of the truck, we make sure all the lights are operating as they sequence through high beam, low beam, turn signals, and clearance lights. Check the windshield glass for cracks or damage. Take a look at the top of the front of the body for overhead damage. We now move around to the right front steer axle tire area and complete the same inspection we completed on the left side. We are now at the right side of the cab area. Here we inspect the mirrors to make sure they are tight and secure. The mirrors should be free of cracks and discoloration. The door should close and latch correctly. The glass in the door should be without damage or cracks. The handles and steps should be secure. Make sure the fuel tank is in good condition without damage or leakage. Tank straps should be tight. Check the fuel cap to make sure that it is tight. 2010 and newer units have a diesel exhaust fluid tank or DEF tank with a blue colored fill cap. When fueling your truck, do not place diesel fuel in the DEF tank. Now look for the DOT annual inspection sticker. Make sure the sticker indicates that the truck has been inspected in the last 12 months. As we make our way down the passenger side of the unit, look at the front of the body for damage. Observe the frame rail and suspension for damage. Check the exhaust. If there is a door in the side of the body, make sure it is latched and secure. As we move to the back of the truck, look at the frame rail and driveline. Look for missing or damaged parts such as U-joints and driveline hangers. Move towards the rear drive axle tires. Make sure there is no debris lodged in between the tires. Make sure the splash device or mud flap is in place and secure. As the lights continue to sequence, make sure all the lights at the rear of the unit are working. This includes the brake, tail, clearance, and license plate lamp. From the rear, look at the condition of the brakes, tires, and suspension. Any damaged or missing parts should be reported immediately. Make sure the bumper is secure. The rear door should be closed and securely latched. 
If the truck is equipped with a lift gate, it should be locked in the closed position. Check the top of the rear of the body for overhead damage. As we move around to the driver's side of the truck, we inspect the left rear drive axle tires and wheels. The mud flaps should be secure, tread depth, inflation, and condition are checked. Lug nuts are secure. Observe the side of the body for any damage. Again, look at the frame rail and suspension for any damage, cracks, broken welds, and rust. Make sure all the body U-bolts are secured. As we move toward the front of the truck, continue to look for damage to the body. Check the battery box to make sure the cover is secured and latched. It is a good practice to drain air tanks daily if they are not equipped with an automatic drain. Now it's time to enter the cab. Always use the three points of contact method when entering or exiting the cab. Make sure the steps and handholds are secure before entering. Make sure you adjust the seat so you have comfortable access to the steering wheel and foot controls. Is your seat belt properly adjusted and operational? Verify the parking brake and apply the trailer brakes. Both the parking brake and the trailer brake knob should be in the out or applied position. If you have an automatic transmission, make sure the gear selector is in park or neutral. If you have a manual transmission, depress the clutch pedal. You should have one and one half to one and three quarters inch free play. Does the pedal move without sticking? Does the service brake move easily? How about the throttle pedal? Wiggle the gear shift lever to ensure the transmission is in the neutral position. It shouldn't feel loose or have excessive play. Next, let's check the safety equipment in the cab. Is the fire extinguisher charged and secured? Are there safety triangles in the cab and in good condition? Test the electric and air horns for operation. Make sure the inside of the cab is free of trash and debris, which could distract you or become lodged under the pedals during driving. Check all of the mirrors to make sure they are properly adjusted and you have clear vision of both sides of the truck. Now insert the ignition key and turn it to the on position without starting the engine. If there's less than 60 PSI on the air brake system when you do this, the low air warning alarm and light should activate. Depress the clutch pedal if you have a manual transmission and start the engine. Once the engine is started, take a look at the instrument panel gauge cluster and observe the readings. Most of the gauges have their own warning lights which signal the operator when a gauge reading is outside preset limits. Amber warning lamps indicate situations that should be reviewed by the driver. Red warning lamps indicate situations that must be inspected before operating the vehicle. You will also notice that an audible alarm is activated when any warning lamp is lit. This alerts you that an active fault exists. Do not operate the vehicle with a red warning lamp. Immediately shut off the unit and call your ideal lease location. On the back of your visor, you will find a dash lamp guide to direct you how to proceed when a warning lamp is illuminated. If the service engine lamp flashes five times when the key is turned on, it is an indication that the truck is due for a PM service. Write this on your DVIR to alert our technicians that the truck is due for service. By now the air system should be fully charged. Now we will do a static brake check. Before conducting this test, be sure you are parked on level ground and chalk the wheels. Release all the brakes and turn the truck off. Observe the pressure for one minute. There should be no more than a two PSI drop for a single unit and three PSI for a tractor trailer combination. Now let's complete an applied brake test. Apply 40 to 45 PSI of pressure to the brake system. After initial drop of five to 10 PSI in the system, there should be no more than a three PSI loss for a single unit and four PSI for a tractor trailer combination. Next, apply 10 full brake and release applications. By doing this, we are adjusting the automatic slack adjuster one half inch. I also recommend this procedure if you are in line for roadside inspection. 
Automatic slack adjusters require full brake applications for adjustment. Good drivers often will operate for days without applying brakes in a manner that would activate adjustment. During this procedure, when applying the brakes, the low air warning light and alarm should sound when the system goes below 60 PSI. Continue to make brake applications until the park brake valves pop between 20 and 45 PSI. Now go ahead and restart the engine and apply the park brakes. Now we'll test the parking brakes to ensure they hold the truck. To test them, restart the vehicle, shift into drive or low gear, and gently tug against the parking brake to see if it holds the vehicle. If not, this usually indicates a dangerously improper brake adjustment. Be sure you note this on the DVIR and do not drive the unit. New technology and vehicles allow us to assist you with many aspects of the operations of the truck. Contact your ideal lease representative to learn about additional features on your truck such as parking brake alarm, overheat shutdown, and PM due warnings. If defects are found, it is important that they are written on the ideal lease DVIR. You can assist us further by giving us detailed explanations in your inspection write-up. Please do not use one-word descriptions of the conditions or defects. Instead, provide us with an indication of when the condition or defect occurred and at what speeds, while turning, braking, etc. Through good communications, we can work together to get your truck repaired in an expedient manner. If the defects you have indicated on the DVIR are safety sensitive and address the tires, service brakes, horn, trailer brake connections, windshield wipers, parking brake, rear vision mirrors, steering mechanism, coupling devices, emergency equipment and lighting devices and reflectors, the defects must be corrected before the truck is placed back into service. Make sure that the DVIR is certified by our technician prior to operating the truck. If your truck is equipped with a refrigeration unit, now is the time to complete an automatic pre-trip inspection of the refrigeration unit. Refer to the control module of the unit. If there are any fault codes, write them up on your DVIR. Now that you have completed the pre-trip inspection, you are ready to start your route knowing that your vehicle is ready to perform safely. Throughout the day, Pay close attention to the operation of your vehicle for any changes that may occur. Thank you for reviewing this important inspection process and thank you for allowing Ideal Lease and Ideal Safe to service your transportation needs. Have a safe and productive day.